Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is You Had Me at Hay, Chapter 3. And this one is titled Sweetness. Yeah, actually. He replied blandly, not bothering to look back at who'd spoken. Would kicking another guy in the balls make you feel any better? The person asked in a nonchalant tone. You quickly whipped around to see who it was who'd spoken to you. Oh, uh, hey, Jiro, you replied, slightly more sprightly this time as you stood up. What brings you back here? Oh, I was just passing by. Thought I'd come in, have a look around, she said with a shrug. Oh, okay, cool. Um, if you need anything, just let me know. I'm happy to help, he said with a smile. So, um, why are you down? She asked as she reached out and took one of the music books off the shelf and flicked it open. Uh, I failed my class, he replied grumpily. That sucks, she replied bluntly, still looking through the book. What assignment was it? I uh, had to compose a song, he replied, crossing your arms and looking away. What happened? she asked. Writer's block? Nah, he replied flippantly. It's my own fault. I left it too late and screwed it. He grumbled. Jero looked up at you with a slightly confused look on her face as she closed the book and put it back on the shelf. Does, um, composing have something to do with your quirk? She asked. How'd you pick that up? You asked, surprised yet again by her perceptiveness. Mm, just a hunch, she replied nonchalantly. Yeah, my, um, quirk is limbic composing, he replied. When I activate my quirk while holding an instrument and channel an emotion, my fingers automatically play a song relating to that emotion. Oh, that's pretty cool, Yin. She replied with a small, encouraging smile. You tried not to spaz out at her saying your name and gave a little flustered laugh. <laughs> uh, nah, it's, uh, it's not that cool because um, it failed me and now I have to reset the class next year. You said as your saddened gaze fell to the floor. Would um, I be able to help in some way? Jo asked as she looked away with a blush on her face, tugging on her ear jack bashfully. You'd help me? You asked excitedly. Um, if I can, I'd like to, Jiro said, still hiding her face from you. Um, well, I really want help, but I don't know what kind of help I need right now, you explained honestly. Mm, fair enough, Jiro shrugged, glancing back at you before looking away again. Well, um, what if I give you my number and you could like, I don't know, text me or whatever if you need me, she said flippantly, laying it off as much as she could so she didn't look too eager. Serious? That'd be awesome, he said happily. Let me grab my phone real quick. You ran past her and then out the back of the store, up to your house on the second level, into your room, grabbed your phone and then back down, phone in hand. Okay, he said brightly. What's your number? Happily, you exchanged numbers. Um, sweet. Thanks, heaps, Jiro. I'll, um, I'll keep you up to date, yeah? You said happily. My parents will probably get the call from my school either tonight or tomorrow, so... If you text me and I don't reply, just assume I've died, he said with a grimace. Screw my life, huh? She deadpanned. Hello, darkness, my old friend, yes, he replied in an equally dead tone. Just then, your dad called to you. Ugh, well, here comes my funeral, he said with a sigh as you raised a hand up so your dad could see you and you'd heard him. Catch ya, Jero said as you turned and walked over to where your dad was. Bye, he said softly over your shoulder as you left. We need to talk, Yin Lin, your dad said sternly. I just got a call from BAAS. You grimaced and looked down at the floor. You're in serious trouble, he said angrily. Get upstairs now. After getting a severe tongue lashing from your father about how you were wasting his money, him meaning that he was paying for your schooling fees and you were failing and causing him to pay more money, you dragged yourself to your room. You flopped down onto your bed feeling absolutely void of emotion. You didn't feel like crying. You'd already passed that emotion half an hour ago. Just then your phone dinged. It was Jiro. You pounced on your phone eagerly. Did you die? Jiro's message read. Barely alive, he texted back. What happened? She asked. Mm, got chewed out by dad. He's going to talk to the principal and see if there's a way I can redeem myself, but I feel like it's going to be something like, you need to get top scores for the rest of the year and we'll pass you BS. He replied, adding the disappointed emoji on the end of the message. Lame, she replied. I know, right? He sent back, sighing as you flopped down on the bed. There was a pause and Jiro didn't reply for a while. You thought it was the end of your very short conversation, but then your phone dinged again. Listen to this song, she sent, along with a YouTube link. 
to a song that you are very familiar with. Oh my god, you sent back. I freaking love this song. I always listen to it when I'm anxious and it calms me down. No way, she replied. Same here. You smiled at your phone. Thanks, Jiro. You sent. It's okay, she replied. She's so sweet, you thought as you flopped back on your bed to listen to the song. The next day at school, you were called into the principal's office. As you feared, you could redeem yourself and pass the class if you brought your grades all the way up. Ugh, so my dad friggin' threw his weight around, and now they're gonna watch me like a friggin' hawk? You grumbled internally. Goodbye to living a normal life. After school, you dragged yourself home to work in the music store, and Loki hoped that Jiro would drop by and see you again. As you stacked the shelves and rearranged some of the instruments, your eyes constantly flicked to the door, praying that she would enter. As the sun started to set, your heart sank. Mm, guess she's not coming today, you thought sadly. Yin, we're done for the day. You can close up now, your dad called from the stairs that led up to your house on the second floor. You sighed and stood up, intending to walk to the door, but one of the bass guitars caught your eye and you reached out and brushed it with your fingers. You pulled it down off the wall and held it to your body, plucking each string first before activating your quirk and letting your fingers play on their own. The piece you played reflected your mood and resonated with your soul, and you poured your everything into it. That's a sick melody line. A voice said from behind you and you jumped. You whipped around. Jiro! You exclaimed with excitement, a bright smile on your face. Then you suddenly realised how eager you sounded and cleared your throat, trying to sound more calm and casual as you looked away slightly to show a little disinterest. <clears throat> uh, hey, what's up? In your egg, she already knows that you like her. Alright, chapter 4 coming tomorrow, see you then.